Hi, this is Ammon with Ventures Truck Parts. Today we're going to do a teardown video on a coil spring Super 60 front. Uh, this axle is set up the same way it would be in your vehicle. I'm standing behind the driver's side. We're going to take apart one side. This process is the same for both sides. We're going to go over the tools that you're going to need to get this teardown done. Uh, first tool is a T27 Torx bit of some sort. You're going to need a pair of deep reach snap ring pliers. These are really important to get this job done. It will make getting the snap ring off of the outer axle shaft much easier. Uh, this is a regular set of snap ring pliers. You can see the difference. The handles are a lot longer. It allows you to reach into the wheel hub uh, the distance that you're going to need to go. You're going to need a 5 16 or 8 millimeter socket for the ABS line a 13 16 or 21 millimeter deep socket for the wheel hub assembly nuts, a hammer of some sort. We're going to use a half inch uh, impact gun for ease of use. You could also use a ratchet if that's all you have. And you'll also need a crowbar or pry bar of some sort to get the axle shaft out of the axle housing. Okay, so the first step that we need to do is take out the three, the three T27 Torx bit bolts for the locking hub and remove the locking hub for ease of use uh, making the video we've already removed the caliper, rotor, and tie rod. Okay so after we've taken those three Torx bit bolts out you'll probably either have to use a hammer or a screwdriver to break the locking hub free from the wheel hub assembly. Once you've done that you pull on the locking hub body and slide it out of the wheel hub assembly. This is what your locking hub should look like. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape. No broken parts. Okay, so the next step after we've taken the locking hub out of the wheel hub assembly is to get a snap ring off of the outer axle shaft. This is where uh, these long reach snap ring pliers that I talked about in the tools come into play. Uh, without these, this job is going to be really hard to do. So you, if you can take your snap ring pliers you'll see that there's a snap ring with two holes uh, in a groove in the outer axle shaft. You're going to want to get your snap ring pliers set up inside the snap ring holes. So this is the snap ring. You can see the two holes that the snap ring plier has to line up with. When you get your snap ring pliers in there and spread it out, you can get it out of the groove in the outer axle shaft and slide it out. You'll need to remove this to be able to get the wheel hub assembly off of the outer axle shaft. Okay, so the next step uh, after we've taken the snap ring out is to remove this ABS line that's attached to the axle housing and the steering knuckle. This ABS line traces your brake line down to the wheel end. So there's three 8mm uh, or 5 16 bolts, one here, one here, and one here. And we'll remove those so that you can take this ABS line off when we, when we remove the wheel hub assembly. So we'll do that now. So now that that's free, we can take the wheel hub assembly off. All right, the next step after we've taken the ABS line off is to remove four 13 16 or 21 millimeter nuts on the back side of the steering knuckle. There's one here, one here, and two in the same spot on the opposite side. So we'll do that now. Okay, so now that we've got all four of the nuts off, this is a little trick that you can do. If you look at this nut, it's flanged, so it won't slide inside of a deep socket. So if you take a nut, and put it back on the stud and thread it on. Thread it on enough that you can just barely see the top of the stud so you've got enough thread. Slide your socket back on. And take your hammer and tap on it. And then do the same on the back side. and then take those nuts back off, you can see that you've got a gap here between the wheel hub assembly and the steering knuckle. You should be able to grab the wheel hub now and slide it off. Okay, so once we've used that uh, 
method with the nut to give you a gap on your uh, wheel hub to the steering knuckle should be free enough now you can just use your studs for your wheel grab those and pull the wheel hub assembly out of the steering knuckle if you just wiggle it a little bit and the wheel hub assembly and your dust shield will come off at the same time they are two separate pieces so here's your dust shield it gets sandwiched between the wheel hub assembly and the knuckle and then you have your wheel hub assembly with the four studs. This is where the four 21 millimeter or 13 16 nuts were threaded on. Okay, two parts that we previously removed are the wheel hub assembly and the locking hub. Now, one of the reasons you may be watching this video is that you have a vacuum leak. These two O-rings that I'm going to point out may be part of your problem. So on the locking hub itself, there is an o-ring this one is orange yours may be orange it may be a different color but that's the location that the o-ring will be on the locking hub and then also on the wheel hub assembly there is an o-ring this one is black yours may be black it may be yellow um, depending on which one you have but that's the location for those two o-rings if those are bad if they have a split a crack a nick you could leak vacuum past that o-ring and that's why your automatic setting in your locking hub may not be working. Uh, the other uh, problem with your vacuum that you may be having is a vacuum seal and that's the next step that we're going to talk about. So uh, one thing to inspect while you, and this may be the reason why you're watching this teardown video is uh, you can see this is the vacuum seal here and it's in between your steering knuckle and the outer axle shaft. The vacuum seal is pressed onto the outer shaft. Uh, if you physically uh, can go underneath your truck and visually see that this seal is damaged, that it's bent, uh, that you have grease leaking past and running down your steering knuckle, those are indications that this vacuum seal has failed and that it needs to be replaced. This vacuum seal that we have on the axle in the video is actually in pretty good shape. Uh, so this will give you a good reference as to whether or not your vacuum seal may or may not be damaged. This is the steering knuckle with the wheel hub assembly removed. The inside diameter of the steering knuckle is a machine surface. Uh, if you've had your vacuum seal or the o-ring that we addressed on the wheel hub assembly go bad, you may have had moisture get inside this steering knuckle. If so, one thing that you're going to want to make sure of is that you can clean up the inside of your steering knuckle and not have pitting rust or uh, galling inside your steering knuckle. This needs to be a smooth finish so that that o-ring and the outside diameter of your vacuum seal can seal off against the, the uh, steering knuckle and not leak vacuum around the outside diameter. Next step is to remove the axle shaft out of the axle housing. To be able to do that, you need to have the steering knuckle turned uh, face forward. So you want to have it with the hole for the tie rod straight forward. And then to, you'll have to uh, remove the axle shaft. Just as a, a note so that you understand, there is not a C-clip on the inner axle shaft inside the differential. So you do not have to pull the differential cover to be able to remove the axle shaft. Next step is to remove the axle shaft. This is where the crowbar or pry bar will come into play. There is a 90, 90 degree step machined on the inner axle shaft right where the dust seal is. If you can get your pry bar between that step and the axle housing, you can use the axle housing to pry against to get the axle shaft through the steering knuckle. Once you've popped that free, you can grab the outer axle shaft and the inner axle shaft and slide it out through the center of the steering knuckle. And as you can see, there's not a groove machined into the inner shaft for a C-clip or anything. All that does is engage the spline with the side gear. Now that we have the axle shaft removed from the axle housing, I'm going to go over the function of the vacuum uh, actuated locking system. Uh, the vacuum system consists of a few different parts. This is one of them. This is your vacuum port. There should be a vacuum line attached to this port that goes up into your wheel well and attaches to a vacuum pump inside the engine bay. 
When you engage your four-wheel drive inside the cab, vacuum is pulled through this port, and that is what engages your locking hub. So now we're going to go to the axle shaft as it would be installed in the housing and go over the different seals and show where you may have a vacuum leak. I have the axle shaft laid out on the table the way that it would be installed inside the axle assembly. Uh, now we're going to talk about the three different seals that hold your vacuum. So if any of these are bad, it may be a reason why you're not holding vacuum. You have your O-ring on your wheel hub assembly, your vacuum seal that's pressed onto the outer shaft, and the O-ring around the locking hub. Uh, is, as you can see how this is laid out, vacuum is created in between these two uh, seals here with the port that we talked about on the steering knuckle. When vacuum is applied, it engages the locking hub and if your locking hub is in the automatic setting, uh, it will engage your four-wheel drive when you turn the switch in the cab. We're going to talk about the function of the vacuum seal now. It consists of two pieces. You have an inside portion that is steel and you have the outside portion that is rubber and in between these two pieces is a lip seal uh, that seals off between those two pieces. And it also allows this seal to have the function uh, that it needs for the axle shaft to turn when four-wheel drive is engaged. So I'm going to kind of show you physically with my hands how it would function inside the steering knuckle. So when you apply power to the front axle and transfer it through the axle shaft, this seal stays stationary on the outside and in the steering knuckle and then the inside portion stays stationary and is pressed onto the outer shaft. So it can't be a solid piece between these two. There has to be a lip seal in between for it to rotate. So this is the function of the vacuum seal. This is how it would work. If, if uh, my hand would be the, vac the steering knuckle holding the outside of the vacuum seal, you can see as you rotate the axle shaft, the inside portion stays with the axle shaft and the outside portion stays stationary. That's critical function for this vacuum seal to work. Uh, if your vacuum seal is damaged, you'll have your axle shaft loose inside the steering knuckle and uh, you won't get a good seal. Next part we're going to talk about is the U-joint. It is what attaches your outer shaft and inner shaft and allows you to be able to steer. Uh, what you want to look for in your U-joint as far as wear goes is you want to make sure that you have smooth actuation uh, in full movement lock to lock on the U-joint and also if you take uh, both shafts outer in one hand inner in the other and try and rotate them opposite of each other that you don't have any slop. It should be really tight, no slop, zero lash. Next part that we're going to talk about is the dust seal. This seals off the outside end of your axle tube to the axle shaft. It is similar in function to the vacuum seal uh, in the fact that the outside portion of the seal stays stationary in the housing as the axle shaft rotates. Let's see how that happens there. And uh, we'll move into the axle housing and show you where it, it installs into the axle housing and how that functions. This is where the dust seal would press into the axle housing. Um, some trucks may or may not have this style of dust seal. Uh, any coil spring front axle will accept a, a revised dust seal that is this style. Uh, that we talked about on the axle shaft that's the two pieces and it actually will press in to the end of the axle tube like that and you so you would install this first and then slide the axle shaft through the dust seal and that would seal off the outside end of your axle tube you can kind of, kind of see how that would sit in there uh, this way other seals in your axle that you may want to inspect are going to be for oil retention. Uh, they are at the inside end of your axle tube. They are called your inner tube seals. The dust seal that we talked about before is not for oil retention. So from this point of your axle housing to this point of your axle housing is dry. There is not oil in this section of your housing. So inside the axle tube there is an inner tube seal that keeps oil from running down your axle tube. If this seal is bad, what will happen is axle uh, gear oil will run down the bottom of your axle tube and it will start to collect down here 
on your axle housing. If this portion of your axle is wet with gear oil, this inner tube seal is most likely your culprit. The next seal for oil retention is going to be the pinion seal. Uh, if you have oil that has collected on this portion of your axle housing or is dripping off the bottom side of your axle, this seal is most likely your culprit. Uh, it sits in between the pinion yoke and the axle housing. We have the parts laid out in succession how they would be placed in the axle, uh, seals and, and U-joint. This is the wheel hub O-ring. It would fit on the wheel hub here. We have the uh, two-piece vacuum seal that presses onto the outer shaft. That's this seal here. We have a U-joint. We have this available in a non-maintenance and also a greasable version that would fit in between your inner and outer axle shafts here. We have the uh, dust seal. This is the revised updated dust seal. This presses into the axle housing. That would fit on the axle shaft here. We have the uh, inner tube seal. This seals off your differential fluid from running down the axle tube. The lip of this seal would seal off against this machine surface on the axle shaft. That's this seal. And then we also have the pinion seal. This would fit between the axle housing and the pinion yoke from your front drive shaft.